morning, sir. Good morning. If you believe you can testify safely and responsibly without a mask, that would be the preference if you can. If you're not comfortable doing that, uh, let me know. I can remove my mask. All right, thank you very much. And please proceed. Good morning, sir. Would you please state and spell your name for the record? Yeah, my name is Stephen Farr, F-A-R-R-E-R. -R -E -R. And uh, how are you employed, sir? I work for BDO and USA. What, what is BDO USA? Uh, it's an accounting firm that provides tax, audit, and advisory services. Uh, what is your role at BDO? I am an enterprise support supervisor. Okay. Uh, tell me about that job. What is that job? So our team, I work. I have a team of 13 individuals, and we are responsible for the firm's large enterprise-wide applications like email, uh, instant message, those kind of things. Sure. Uh, how big of a company is BDO? Uh, we roughly have about 12,000 employees and partners, and yeah. Uh, where are you based out of? Uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Uh, was one of your employees at BDO, I, I imagine you've learned eventually, but was one of your employees a guy by the name of Bart Halverson? Yes, that's correct. Um, and you became involved in Bart Alderson's uh, email and calendar and things of that sort at the request of some sheriff's deputies from here in Dane County? Yes. Okay. Did you know Bart before this? Not that I can recall. Okay. Um, tell me about, uh, just briefly, um, the computers that employees of BDO have at home when they work from home. Yep. So the firm kind of supplies a laptop computer. Most of them are the same, and they're given to all of the uh, employees. And were people working from home more frequently than usual since the pandemic? Yes, that's correct. Including uh, in July of 2021? Yes. Okay. And Bart Halderson was one of those employees? Yes. Uh, the computer that Bart Halderson had at home, uh, did it have any uh, not ordinary uh, security measures to it, like a retina scanner or a fingerprint scanner? No, it did not. Okay. Um, in general, it was just a computer that if you you could log into with a username and password? Yes. Okay. Um, now, in the course of this case, you learned that, that Bart Halderson had died, and you were asked by some police to essentially freeze any of his accounts. Yes. Okay. Um, and at some point, police and myself and others have asked you questions. And one of those questions has been, uh, when was the last uh, email sent by Mr. Bart Halderson? Objection to leading questions. Did it? That's fine. Uh, did I ask you a question regarding the last email? regarding Mr. Bart Halderson sending from his account? Yes. Okay. And did you provide that email to police? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you what's been marked in this case, exhibit number 486. And just briefly, uh, what is the first page of this? Uh, it is an email that was sent um, from myself to uh, Brian Chunk. Okay. And what did you indicate that you were doing in this email? I was attaching uh, some screenshots from Bart's last emails that were sent from his mailbox. Okay. And we'll go to the second page of uh, 486. Uh, is that the email that you sent? Yes, that's correct. All right. Um, I'll move uh, 486 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. Uh, this email, did it have any significance other than it was the last email sent from Bart Halderson's account? Not that I was aware of. Okay. And just what is the date and time of that email being sent? Uh, 3.07 p.m. Eastern at uh, July 1st, 2021. 3.07 Eastern? Yes. Okay. And uh, you've re have you reviewed uh, Mr. Halderson's email account a couple times now in the course of this case? Yes, I have. And was that, in fact, the last email that he sent? Yes. So 2.07 Central? Yes. Okay showing you uh, what's the third page of that exhibit, which is exhibit number 486. What am I looking at there? It's his calendar, work calendar. Sure. And uh, what's the time range for that calendar? June 27th through July 3rd, 2021. Okay. And was this from Mr. Halderson's account that you locked up yes. from video? Move to publish um, 486. You may. So just looking at that second page, there's no significance perhaps to the email, um, but what you were referencing uh, was the time and date that it was sent. And that Cor was, okay. Correct. All right. And as to the calendar, does this appear to be an Outlook calendar maintained by people at BDO? Yes. And so... Is there any significance to the different colors that people use on their calendar? 
No. Yeah, it's customizable. Got it. And so if we look right here, um, Thursday the 1st, um, and scheduled here uh, just around 3 o'clock, and I'll have you read it because it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, but on Mr. Halderson's calendar on July 1st, uh, around uh, 3, uh, what does that say? Krista doctor appointment? Sorry, you're looking at the 30th. Look oh. at the 1st. Chaz M-A-T-C. No further questions. Cross-examination. Good morning, Mr. Farr. How are you? Good. So a couple of questions for you. The state mentioned something about Mr. Halderson's um, BART's laptop, um, and that is a work-issued laptop, correct? Correct. So you're pretty familiar with that laptop and how it's used? Yes. Um, the state mentioned something about no fancy equipment, if you will, to log into that computer. Is that correct? Correct. Um, not only did you provide the emails shown, but you provided different information to the deputy sheriff that you spoke to, correct? Correct. And I believe the contact person was actually Detective Shuck. I believe so, yes. Okay. So along with emails um, and that calendar invite, or that calendar. You also provided information on Mr. Halderson's login, correct? Yes. And with the login information, that's something that's generated. Um, it, it's not something that Bart himself put in a spreadsheet. It's something that's generated through some kind of computer program that you, you use. Correct. Um, now, with that spreadsheet that you provided about the logins, um, could you give us a little more information on, on what exactly was provided in that spreadsheet? Do you have a copy of that spreadsheet? Because I, I, I know I sent a couple, and I, I want to make sure yes. I, I speak So clearly. actually, um, give me a second to get that ready for you. Uh, it's a copy of a couple of emails I had sent to uh, uh, Richard Bennett about some of the login information, login information for Bolt Hardison's computer. And Richard Bennett, was that someone from the Deputy Sheriff's Department? Correct. Perfect. And does that look like a true and accurate copy of the email and the spreadsheet that you provided? Yes. Um, you will get into evidence. Any objection? I uh, no. No. It is received. All right. So I'll leave that there for you if you need to refresh your collection. Um, but I believe my question was, what exactly was it that you provided with that 
So the, the spreadsheet had a record of when the laptop was locked or unlocked. And for it to be locked or unlocked, was some kind of password required? A password is used to unlock the computer. And that password, is it one where you only have a certain number of entries to try before it locks you out and you have to call someone from IT? Yes. Do you know how um, many logs or how many attempts you have? I do not offhand. Okay. Um, was there any other kind of login that a password was required? There are several um, applications that we have that you could use a password to log into. And could you briefly tell us some of those? Um, if they're included in that spreadsheet? They are not included in the spreadsheet, no. This is strictly just the computer. Okay, so what else does that spreadsheet have? Does it have anything else about any kind of um, last login that Mr. Halderson would have had? No, it just has the login, log off, and, and computer restarts and shutdowns. And is it something that you would require your employees to shut down their computer regularly? We do advise our employees to shut down regularly. Okay, and based on that spreadsheet, when is the last login for Mr. Halderson, or log out, excuse me? The last log out would have been July 1st at 8.07 Eastern. 8.07 Eastern time. 8.07 p.m. Eastern. And that would have required some kind of passcode. That is the log off, so there's no passcode when you log off. You just turn off the computer. Well, your computer will either turn off automatically if you don't do anything for 20 minutes, or you can manually log off your computer. Okay. So then that would mean that at some point, at least the computer was active um, roughly a little before 8.07 Eastern time. It would either have to be active or if you had a video playing at the same time, that would keep your computer from becoming locked automatically. Does that spreadsheet also tell you when was the last login that would have required some kind of password? Yes. And when was that? Five thirteen p.m. Eastern on July first. So from five thirteen Eastern to roughly about eight oh seven Eastern, the computer was active the whole time. Correct. Thank you. No further questions, and I'll take that back from you. He, he could, if you wouldn't mind, he could keep it for okay. a second. Redirect. Sure. Uh, so five thirteen Eastern, meaning four thirteen Central, was the last verifiable time that that computer was logged into. Correct. Are and. We've had discussions about this, have we not? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any way that you can tell who logged into the computer at 4.13 p.m.? No. Okay. Um, are you able to tell at all what was being done on that computer at 4.13? Not with these logs, no. Sure. Um, and you've had conversation, have you had conversations with law enforcement uh, regarding um, trying to figure out what was going on on that computer? Yes. And are you able to tell? Not concretely, no. Uh, so the last verifiable time uh, that you're able to determine someone manually was doing something on that computer is that login time at just after four. Uh, Correct. Okay. Um, and you said things could be keeping the computer active. What types of things keep the computer active for long periods of time? Objection, so if you, speculation. Overruled. You can answer. So if you were doing a training and it had a video component to it, uh, that would keep your computer from being uh, locked out. If you're watching YouTube and you had a video open, that would keep your computer from being locked out. Um, but in terms of verifiable information on the computer, we talked about the last email that was sent. No email was sent when that computer was logged back into at 4 o'clock? Correct. Okay. Uh, and I'll ask it, perhaps I already have, and I hate to be it's a redundant, but just want to make, make sure I'm clear. Are you able to determine based on any of your programs that you have access to or the data you've looked at whether anything other than logging into the computer was done after 4 o'clock or that, that time at 4 o'clock? We weren't able to, no. Okay. Um, in terms of passwords, this is, just, is this just the normal thing you look at when you unlock your computer? You have your username and you enter a password? Yes. Um, do you know who had Mr. Halderson's passwords? I don't know. Uh, in the course of this investigation, have I and police um, 
provided information to you that Mr. Halverson was a bit perhaps loose with his passwords? Yes. In fact, I've showed you documents in this case. I'll show you what's been admitted into evidence is 203. Um, you've seen this document before? Yes, I have. And what does that appear to be? A list of username and passwords. Um, and most of these usernames, you're able to tell from the initials and the name of the user who, who appears to be the user. Bart. Okay. So if Bart Halderson's password, for instance, was on a document, I'm not saying this document, but a password document or a post-it note uh, sitting next to the computer, you would have no way of knowing who logged on to that computer at 4 o'clock. Correct. Okay. So if someone wanted to log on, throw on a YouTube playlist of, of music and listen to music on that computer, you wouldn't know who was on there. Correct. Okay. Are you able to tell um, what Bart Halderson's password was from your data? No. Uh, and I asked you to try, didn't I? Yes. Okay. No further questions. Any recross? Yes. That spreadsheet that the state just showed you, um, were you able to determine what the password and the username were from that spreadsheet that they provided? We tried a few of those passwords and they we're not, we were not able to succeed. And you also mentioned that there was how many logins that you were able to try before it booted you out or kicked you out? I don't know off the top of my head. But there was a limit. Yes. No further questions. Thank you. May this witness be excused? He may. And released? Yes. Thank you, sir. I'll grab the spreadsheet. And Thank then you. perhaps Ms. Doro and I should approach real quick to talk about that issue we had brought up a sure. second ago. 